to dear students this is the second talk of uh, this series of uh, lectures on the meat its science of quality so when we talk of quality the first thing that comes to our mind is the color of meat so as mentioned in the last talk the color of meat is uh, principally due to the presence of the tissue pigment myoglobin as you go to the meat shop to buy meat as anyone go to the meat shop to buy meat the color of uh, the meat uh, is the primary quality we look for the color of the meat can vary from red to pink and of different intensities and generally the most bright meat is chosen by us the customers so in the slide you can see there are different grades of meat uh, of uh, meat color and let's say the meat color is due to myoglobin the content of myoglobin in a piece of meat can vary depending on the species of animal or bird its age physical activity and the portion of the carcass from which the meat has been cut out for example uh, the case of white meat and red meat the amount of myoglobin in red meat is much much higher than the, in the white meat and the meat color of local chicken and broiler chicken you can clearly distinguish broiler chicken are lower its red intensity is lower local chicken is much brighter the meat color of a uh, young calf and the uh, adult goat so you can see in the during the childhood the color intensity will be different from its adulthood and the meat taken out from the chest and the leg will be of different color but overall the color of meat actually is determined by the state of chemistry of the pigment myoglobin so myoglobin is a protein it has got a, a metallic part and iron part so the chemistry of the myoglobin and its changing chemistry or its changing structure it actually gives it decides the color of the meat so here you can see the structure of the pigment myoglobin <coughs> myoglobin it's a water soluble metalloprotein that it has got a metal part in it uh, along with the protein and it is uh, specially designed to store oxygen to be utilized by the muscle cells in energy metabolism the metal part of the metalloprotein myoglobin is iron in its ferric state that is fe2 plus state it is called ferric state it has a tendency of readily oxidizing and uh, the oxidized state and the extent of specific oxidation of the ferric ion actually decides its color and hence the color of the meat so different oxidizing agents or different oxidants can react with the ferric ion and form differently colored pigment products like for example uh, the freshly cut beef has a purplish red color depicting the native or original state of the pigment myoglobin but gradually after cutting of the meat after slaughtering of the animal and cutting of the meat when the o2 from the atmosphere the oxygen from the atmosphere it comes into contact with the cut piece and reacts with the myoglobin spheric group it turns into the customer's desired bright red color meaning that the myoglobin has changed to oxymyoglobin so when we cut a piece of meat the oxygen from the atmosphere will react with the myoglobin and turn the turn this purplish red color to bright red color which is of oxymyoglobin so the desired color of meat the desired red color of meat or the desired bright red color of meat is because of turning of myoglobin to the red colored pigment oxymyoglobin but sometimes an over aged or poorly handled piece of meat can turn into dark brown color this happens when some strong chemical reacts with the myoglobin or oxymyoglobin and releases one electron from the ferric ion that is turning fe2 plus to fe3 plus that is from ferric to ferrous ion 
and the pigment is then called metmyoglobin. So you can see in the slide the removal of electron from myoglobin and oxymyoglobin results in this dark brown colored metmyoglobin. This uh, conversion from myoglobin to oxymyoglobin and to metmyoglobin are actually reversible. That is, they can occur in both the ways. And some reduction enzymes, they are called reduction enzymes, present in the muscles of the of the of the animal are responsible for this color reversion. In fact, such color reversion react. Uh, sir, pardon. Uh, you see, the myoglobin to oxymyoglobin, from oxymyoglobin to metmyoglobin, or myoglobin to metmyoglobin, and metmyoglobin to myoglobin, these are reversible reactions, and these are carried out by certain re reduction enzymes present in the tissue itself. Okay. In fact, such color reversion reactions keep occurring naturally in the meat during its storage. So naturally, these changes from myoglobin to oxymyoglobin, it keeps on taking place when the meat is being stored. The reactions can be controlled and hence the color of meat can be regulated. These reactions can be controlled by the, by the meat processors and the color of the meat can be regulated. However, when we cook the meat, it causes formation of a brown state of the pigment called denatured med myoglobin, which causes brown coloration. This reaction is not reversible. So once denatured metmyoglobin, this brown colored metmyoglobin is formed during cooking, this denatured metmyoglobin, it cannot go back to the myoglobin, oxymyoglobin or its metmyoglobin stages. So in modern day supermarkets, meats are available in packages and color change and retention is a primary concern when uh, selecting the packaging material or the package type for a meat. As has been put on the slide, oxymyoglobin retention is the most important to appeal the customer choice. Hence, meat packages should be permeable to oxygen that, so that oxymyoglobin is abundantly formed. So the package or the plastic material or whatever packaging material you're using, it should be permeable to oxygen so that oxygen can enter into the in, in, enter into the package and react with myoglobin and form oxymyoglobin, which gives the desired color and gives the gets the appeal uh, to the customers. But chemicals forming med myoglobin that is the brown pigment should not enter the package and such chemicals can be in gaseous state also so it's better the packages should be selectively permeable to oxygen and not such chemical fumes and microbe resistance or microbe impermeability is always a basic criteria for any food package Vacuum packages are most popular for packaging of meat as they prohibit gases, moisture and inhibit moisture, uh, microbe growth by creating unavailability of air and moisture inside the packages. But in vacuum packets, the major drawback is the unavailability of oxygen. As there will be no air inside the package, there will be no oxygen also. However, when the package is opened from the atmosphere, oxygen will be obtained and oxymyoglobin forms rapidly and the desired meat pigmentation is attained. Chilling or putting in the fridge of meat, uh, chilling of meat is uh, very popular to inhibit microbial growth but deactivation of the color reversion enzymes in extreme cold often results in undesirable color in the meat. This color reversion enzymes, those are actually uh, 
denatured by chilled temperature. So if we're storing a meat for a very long time in a chilled environment, in a very chilled environment, the enzymes will get deactivated and the color reversion reaction will not occur and the desired color will not be obtained. Okay, here I shall be mentioning about some additional factors responsible for color change of meat. The first is pH. We now know that the pH of meat drops rapidly after death of an animal due to accumulation of lactic acid. Okay, it drops from near neutral pH to a level of about 5.5 or little below 5.5. The meat color becomes pale when the pH drops. As acidity develops, the number of positive charges in the muscle cells or in the muscle fibers also increases. It is attaining acidity, that means the number of positive charges is increasing. It, it causes reactions and changes in the muscle structure. So the changed muscle structure have altered optical properties. That means they reflect different intensities of light than that of fresh meat. And hence, they look dull in appearance. The regulation of muscle pH and not allowing it to drop can maintain the desired color of the meat. So, however, as shown in the table, there are some disadvantages of higher pH also. Like in the third point on the right hand side. The meat surface in case of high pH meat is dry. The meat surface in case of high pH meat is dry, which does not allow oxygen to penetrate into the muscles and form the desired oxymyoglobin. Also, high pH meat generally takes longer time to attain the cooked meat color. So you have to cook high pH meat for a longer time to attain the cooked meat color of denatured meat. Myoglobin. The next is storage time until processing or cooking of the meat. The longer you store the meat, the color stabilizing reduction enzymes get exhausted and cannot cause the necessary color reversion reactions. So the longer you keep, the enzymes become gradually weaker and they cannot they cannot carry out the color reversion reaction and that is why the desired color is not obtained for a meat which has been stored for long. For very long storage times, however, frozen meat shows better color reversion than non-frozen meat. The ideal meat storage temperature for beef is minus 1.5 degrees Celsius that is 29.3 degree Fahrenheit for maximum color retention as well as the microbial stability. Now, for preparing meat patties, etc., we grind the meat to a paste consistency. We grind the meat to make a paste. So during grinding, air gets incorporated in the paste. A high volume of air inhibits the color reversion enzymes. So if there is a high pressure of air inside the inside the paste then the color reversion enzymes also get deactivated or inhibited to keep away the air from the grinding atmosphere vacuum grinding is often practiced so grinding it under vacuum that is no air is present inside the grinder but again when air is not present oxygen is also not present so the absence of oxygen remain an issue with vacuum grind meat and the Form of, and the formation of oxymyoglobin is questioned. And as has been mentioned earlier, cooking causes an irreversible change to the meat pigment, forming stable denatured met myoglobin. The pigment, the final pigment in cooked meat, will be denatured met myoglobin, which cannot be reversed back to the original forms. However, the pH of meat before cooking affects its formation and low pH meat easily forms denatured meat myoglobin. High pH meat therefore requires longer 
cooking as has been mentioned in the table I put earlier in the earlier slide. So the lower the pH, more is the tendency to form denatured methemoglobin. Higher the pH, lower is the tendency to form methemoglobin and therefore longer cooking time is required for meat with higher pH. Curing is a color and flavor enhancing method or process in which the meat chunk, uh, large chunk of meat is sprinkled or immersed or drowned or injected with a sodium nitrite salt or its solution. The salt it forms nitrous acid and nitrous oxide. The nitrous acid reacts with the myoglobin pigment to form nitric oxide myoglobin. It gives the typical pink color of cured red meat. So this uh, Nitrogen salt or the nitrite salt is either sprinkled over or rubbed over, sprinkled over or rubbed over the meat surface, or it is made into a solution and the meat chunk is immersed in it, or is injected with the solution of the salt. So this nitrous acid formed in the solution, it reacts with the myoglobin to form nitric oxide myoglobin which is pink in color and this pink color is the characteristic of cured meat. Cooking of cured meat causes conversion of this nitric oxide myoglobin to nitrosyl hemochrome. So when you cook uh, this cured meat which is having the nitric oxide myoglobin so it will convert to nitrosyl hemochrome it is another pigment which is more stable and uh, is the ideal it gives the ideal color of cooked cured meat the process of curing is shown in this slide you can see how curing is done for curing first the large chunk of meat is punctured with a bunch of sharp needles so that the curing solution can be distributed throughout evenly. The chunk, the punctured chunk is then immersed in the curing solution and the other two photos on the right hand side are of the traditional salt sprinkling or salt rubbing and the modern curing solution injection techniques. The reaction of conversion of uh, myoglobin to nitric oxide myoglobin and to nitrosyl hemochrome are also shown in the slide. One is uh, the characteristic pink ring. It is a characteristic color formation, on, especially on pork meat. And a general pinking of meat is uh, you can study from the material I have provided to you. So this finishes the color of meat uh, lecture. Thank you very much. Good luck. Best wishes.